Cameron here, and today I want to talk about the science of simulated pressures. And by that I mean a way of thinking, of organizing your thoughts about simulated pressures uh, overall. And in my mind, it sort of breaks down into five steps. And I'm not saying it necessarily goes in this order, but these are sort of the five steps you're ultimately thinking about. What are you attacking as a defense? Who are you ultimately going to be sending? Who are you going to be dropping? What coverage are you going to run? And what sort of adjustments are you ultimately going to have? Uh, such as are we going to be running the same thing versus 2x2 two two as 3x1 as trip snub, so on and so forth. Okay. So the first thing is, is, what are you ultimately attacking? And essentially, simulated pressure is also known as creepers. You're attacking one of two things, something in particular uh, in their run game, but you also don't necessarily want to send five in case you end up wrong. So let's say, for example, I don't know, they're playing uh, pin and pull uh, to the Y uh, into the boundary here, and you want to find some way of attacking that one without necessarily committing five guys. Okay, that's a classic example of what you're identifying exactly what you're attacking. Now, pass-wise, you're ultimately attacking the protection because the goal of a simulated pressure on a pass play is to get one of your rushers one-on-one -on -one with a running back, okay? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, simulated pressure means you're gonna send one of these six guys at the quarterback and drop one of these. So you ultimately have seven in coverage and you're sending four but these six individuals here are typically lined up in coverage for a reason. These four individuals here are typically lined up for pass rush for a reason, okay? It's because they're good at that and not necessarily very great in coverage, and these guys are good in coverage and not necessarily great pass rushers. So if you aren't thinking intelligently about how you're gonna be attacking the pass protection, I think you're just doing yourself more harm than good. Now, I'll just give a short Vast oversimplification of pass protections. Um, yes, I know pass protections are vastly more complicated than this, but for the sake of discussion, let's just cover it briefly. Most six man um, or six man half slide type protections essentially involve the offensive line taking the down lineman and then one or two called blitz threats based on the protection. So in this instance, the offensive line essentially is going to take these four individuals and then one of three possible called blitz threats, Will, Mike, or Star. And then the running back is responsible for the remaining two based on the call. And if both those guys come, then the quarterback's hot. It's, he's, it's his responsibility to get the ball out quickly. So let's say, for example, I don't know, six-man half slide, and the Will is ultimately going to be the responsibility of the offensive line. Well, that means running back's got Mike and Star. Mike comes, running back supposed to pick him up. Star comes, running back supposed to pick him up. Both of them come, quarterback's up. Simple as that. Okay. Gets a little bit more nuanced when it comes to three down, and this is you know, a bit of the, the game that goes on between defense and offensive minds. Whenever you get to three down, sometimes it's for the defense's benefit. Sometimes you can over uh, outthink yourself. So essentially, again, offensive line, family's going to take three down linemen here, and then two blitz threats. Let's say it's the Jack and Will, um, and sort of a you know, slide to that side, or uh, two outside threats, that would be fan protection, so the offensive line is gonna take these three guys, and then the Jack and then the Star, um, or in what I know as back or out protection, uh, the offensive line is gonna take these three guys, and then additionally, the Mike and the Will, and the running backs are responsible for the Jack and the Star. Now, tip, you don't, see that a ton unless you're uh, potentially going up against a tight front team that likes to rush from the inside linebackers, at which point it can be a dawning realization for the offensive coordinator that maybe we don't want to put Devin White one-on-one -on -one with our running back. Maybe we want the offensive line to be trying to pick that up because that dude is a beast. So that's just broad overview in terms of uh, protections as far as that goes on what ultimately you are trying to attack. So if the offensive line they, they keep calling the protection over here, then you're going to want to send one, either one of the mic or the star. Or if they're in fan protection, even though fanning out, you want to send one of these two inside individuals. Okay. So that's essentially what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a one-on-one -on -one with the running back. Okay. Next question is, 
Who are you ultimately sending? And the way I think of it, there's four attack vectors uh, out there. There's essentially an outside attack vector here. There's an interior one to this side, an interior one to this side, and an exterior one over here. This is just broad thinking here. Uh, I'm not saying that that's exactly how it works, but broadly speaking, I like to think of it as those four attack vectors. So for this outside vector over here, you have one of three individuals who can go rush that spot. You got the mic, you got the star, you got the strong safe. Typically, you're not going to have the field corner go unless Z is compressed, and, but that would be more of a check, and that's not a call. Uh, over here, again, you got three individuals who can rush this uh, exterior lane over here. Got the bounded corner, got the free safety, got the well. Well, can bounce out like that. And then when it comes to the interior ones, it's pretty much just the mic and the will. You know, Mike can dab a two-way go on a guard or flip over here, two-way go on a guard that way. Same thing with the will. Theoretically, you could bring down one of the safeties um, to play one of those interior spots, but uh, as you're going to be showing your hand, uh, so the offensive line is going to know something is afoot, uh, this individual, or this individual, whichever one you're sending, better be a dude, because otherwise I don't think it's going to work. Bad way to run a railroad. So, one sort of point I have to make here, and this is just part of my own uh, thoughts after watching tons of different simulated pressures, is that you want to make sure that at the time of the snap, you're, whoever you're ultimately sending is no more than 10 yards from the quarterback. Essentially, a lot of the time what you're trying to do on a simulated pressure is force the ball out of the quarterback's hands in less than two and a half seconds. Okay? Well, how fast are these guys normally? How fast can they normally cover 10 yards? 1.7, 1.6 seconds, and then they're potentially going to have a running back in the way. So quick math there, you want to make sure that they're uh, about 10 yards from the quarterback at the time that they rush, which means that typically the boundary corner, SAR, the safeties, they're going to have to creep a bit before launching themselves. So you're going to work on time in the snap as far as that goes. So it's essentially a decision on, um, you know, once you sort of identify which attack factor you ultimately want to go with, um, what personnel matchups you're ultimately willing to live with. Say, for example, let's go to that pin and pull to the Y side. You're really not liking it. Um, so you decide, hey, well, I want to attack over here and blow things up. Let's have the corner come. Then you realize, oh, I'm not really liking the safety here, having a man up on that dude. Okay, well, let's instead, let's have it be the safety who's going to come off the edge and hopefully cause all kinds of havoc and problems for their pen and pull play. That's a personnel-based decision, and that's ultimately what you're deciding um, when discuss figuring out who ultimately you're going to send. It's a personnel discussion. Or maybe, man, this is a dude. I think we're going to have to double him, so instead you send... The will around, though, I don't see how that ultimately benefits against pen and pull. Um, but anyway, off topic. So the next question is, who are you going to be dropping into coverage? Now, for three out teams, it tends to be pretty easy because dropping that jack into coverage, since he tends to be a hybrid outside linebacker defensive end, is an easy answer. It can be a little bit more complicated, a little bit nuanced. Of the discussion when it comes to four down teams. Yes, a lot of four down teams ultimately have a boundary defensive end that essentially is a, a bit of a Leo in uh, Pete Carroll language and a little bit of a hybrid defensive end as far as that goes, only we're not calling him that, sort of. Um, but also, depending on the athleticism of uh, your interior lineman, you may also be able to drop one of these individuals. Though if you're going to drop one of these individuals, I highly recommend that they never end up covering a skill guy and probably end up just playing brat in the hole uh, in your standard cover one variation. Now, again, the whole thing is, is who ultimately on the line uh, you know, is going to have the athleticism to pull off whatever coverage assignment you're going to hand them. Which leads me into the next question, what coverage are you going to run with it? And the thing is, is if you're going to run that particular sim simulated pressure a ton, I would say install at least five different coverages to go along with it. But at a minimum, and at a minimum, I'd say you have to have two for each simulated pressure. It's not all a film I've watched from of Dave Aranda and Justin Wilcox's defenses. You at least want two complementary coverages. So let's say, for example, I don't know, we're going to send the star, 
We're going to drop best boundary defense of that most common simulated pressure in all of college football and in any even particularly close. You can put all the uh, defensive cognizetti from you know Wilcox, Ronda, Saban, Kirby. Um, you can throw in Pruitt, you have all those guys. You can all stuff them into a room and say, you know, come up with plays you guys all agree on. I guarantee you, this right here is going to be one of them. Most common one in all of college football, I swear. So let's say your base one that you want to run with is cover three. So essentially, he's going to go, he's going to come down and be the curl flat player, he's going to drop, be curl flat, this guy's going to play deep middle. Okay, well, the offense eventually is going to figure you out. And so they're going to start running, let's say, quick outs over here. And this strong safety, there's no chance on a, he's going to be able to cover that quick out coming from way over here. So you need to put in some sort of complement to go with whatever your base coverage ultimately is. So, for example, cover two or a form of two read would be just great here. Hey, if they're going to try to give us quick stuff on the outside, let's blow that stuff up, let's say, using cover two. So whichever... For every single one you have, I think you need at a minimum two, like one is your base and then another as a complement based on what the offense is ultimately giving you. But also I think if you're gonna run a particular simulated pressure a ton, let's say you're just enamored with sending the star off the edge, I would recommend installing more than two because of the amount of stuff offense can do to screw with you. This last sort of thing is adjustments. So. What sort of adjustments are we going to ultimately build in based on the offense's formation? So let's use uh, a Kirby Smart example because I think that's it's always a good place to start. Kirby's pretty darn good. So let's say we, they're going to go in their standard tight front because boy, do they love tight front down there in Athens. All right. So. We're going to run sort of a simulated pressure, but hey, this is this is the base way we kind of want to handle it. We don't necessarily want to rush the jack. We kind of want to give them a little bit more problems. So we're going to send the will here on a two-way go and then ultimately play, let's say, base quarters here and base quarters over here. Um, that's sort of our, our simulated pressure that we're going to run for here. But then the offense has got to mess with your plans and then just decide to go three by one. And then they also got the running back to the same side. And so you're looking at that and going, man, I'm not, I'm not really liking how this is going to all work out with the will rushing here. We're essentially just wasting this check. I mean, he's not really going to be doing much of anything if we sort of have him hang out there like that. So you instead say, okay, let's send the star. And he's going to be that fourth rusher. And then we're going to roll into a form of cover three that way. Um, and or it's essentially going to be cover three, but you'll have this jack buzz underneath the X, and then this guy will play deep third, something to that effect. Well, that's that's what I mean by adjustments, is essentially if the offense changes formation, gives you a different look, and uh, your original plan simulated pressure, the way you wanted to go about attacking it, it's no longer available, that you have sort of built-in adjustments to go along with it. And if you're actually doing a pretty decent job with those adjustments, I think you can really compress your number of simulated pressures down considerably um, because essentially all you're doing is saying, hey, when we get this type of look here, um, this is what we ultimately want to do. So it becomes this very um, uh, automatic sort of check type system. And you might be able to survive with just six simulated pressures. You're good because it, it'll change. It'll adapt based on ultimately what you're getting from the offense. So that's how I think of sort of organizing my head, how to think about simulated pressures, how to go about uh, designing them for what you're ultimately going up against. Um, and th those steps essentially are, what are you attacking? Who are you sending? Who are you dropping? What coverage are you gonna run? And then are there gonna be any sort of specific adjustments to go along with it? As always, hope you found this enjoyable and informative.